Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and it is then posted to our website for you to watch at your convenience, and I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access our recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Um, here at the Nebraska Library Commission, we are the state agency for libraries, and that is for all types of libraries. So you will find um, shows on Encompass Live and in our archives that could be for any type of library, uh, public, academic, K-12 schools, um, corrections, museums, archives, et cetera, et cetera, anything and everything. Really, our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries, something uh, cool that libraries are doing, some resources or services we think that libraries could benefit from. Uh, but it's all just, you know, library focused in general. Uh, we sometimes have Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on and do presentations about services and programs we offer through the commission, but we also bring in guest speakers. And that's what we have this morning. Uh, this morning with us is Josh Hansen. Good morning, Josh. Good morning, Krista. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and he is from our uh, Nebraska's Department of Labor. And um, he's going to talk to us about um, a great partnership that he's um, developing in the midst of. Hopefully, there'll be more of it <laughs> with libraries, um, with workforce development. So um, I'm just going to hand it over to you, Josh, to take it and tell us all about it. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Kristen. And good morning, everyone. Um, as Kristen mentioned, my name is Josh Hansen. I'm the Greater Nebraska one stop operator with the Nebraska Department of Labor Division of Reemployment Services. And I'm here today just to explain some of the employment and training programs that we do offer through the Division of Reemployment Services and how educating um, our local libraries on the different programs that we offer, we, we offer is going to strengthen our accessibility for those job seekers, employers in rural Nebraska to gain access to our reemployment co coordinators. And we understand, you know, um, Patrons utilize the libraries pretty frequently for their employment and training needs. So what we want to do is just be able to provide your staff um, with the information and education on our programs so that we can get connected with those patrons that are seeking those services and whether that be getting them into our office for that initial eligibility determination on programs, um, initial report building, or connecting them with our staff on a virtual uh, basis. So the first thing I'm going to go over is the Greater Nebraska Workforce Development Area. <clears throat> so Nebraska is made up of three local workforce development areas. There's Greater Lincoln, Greater Omaha, and then there's Greater Nebraska. So Greater Lincoln serves Lancaster and Sonder counties, where Greater Omaha serves Douglas, Sarpy, and Washington counties. And now Greater Nebraska, which I represent, serves the remaining 88 counties in the state of Nebraska. And as you can see there on that map, it shows the boundaries of the Greater Nebraska. So everything in that um, kind of light blue area is all areas that we serve. And the two star buildings or the two stars that we see on Grand Island and Beatrice are our actual comprehensive American job centers. And then the rest of the locations that we have there are affiliate one-stop centers throughout the city of Nebraska. Um, this is also referred as a local area, but the Greater Nebraska Workforce Development Area consists of those two comprehensive American job centers and there are 12 career centers throughout the state. That's a lot of space for you to cover. You're not all by yourself, I hope. <laughs> when I'm not by myself, we have a great um, field team that's built up of and executes different programs throughout the state. Um, they're the ones that really administer these programs and do the marketing, the outreach, promoting our services and trying to target individuals that are in most need of our employment and training programs that we have. But as you can see, um, we are we are spread out. Um, there's in some locations, especially in the rural parts such as Mid Plains and the Panhandle, the nearest office for a participant may be a two hour drive one way. So this is why we wanna educate the libraries. I think there was 40 some libraries in the Panhandle alone uh, compared to our two local offices. So those people that have those transportation barriers that are unable to access or physically access our office, we wanna be able to uh, still provide accessibility 
through virtual services. And that's where the library partnership comes in and educating staff so that you're aware of the programs that we provide. So as you hear it in those libraries, as patrons are coming in, then we can get them connected with our staff so that we're still providing the services that they need. So the Department of Labor, uh, Division of Reemployment Services, we actually implement Title One and Title Three of the It looks like Dash has frozen up here. Oh no. <clears throat> oh, he lost his connection. Go ahead and try and pick it up again from this slide. <laughs> Thank you, Chris, and I apologize again, everyone, uh, tech issues. But as I was saying, um, within the Greater Nebraska Workforce Development Area, um, we are the Division of Reemployment Services. And what we do within that division is provide assistance to employers, job seekers, and training providers across the state. Some of the programs um, that our field staff operate um, within this division are the Jobs for Veterans State Grant, the Wagner Pizer Job Seeker, Nebraska Reemployment Services Program, Trade Adjustment Assistance, and the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act um, with the Adult Dislocated Worker Program and then in school and out of school youth as well too. Um, some of the reemployment services um, responsibility are also providing staff and program support to field operation units and virtual service units operating Nebraska's public online labor exchange, AnyWorks, um, so that we are expanding access and providing services to employers, job seekers, and program participants. Now, the services available at each one-stop center are designed to meet the requirements of our Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. There are three tiers of services that we provide, the core services, intensive services, and training services. So within our core services, that's gonna include self-access and informational services that'll be available within our resources resource rooms or online, which include self-access assessment and career planning tools, labor market information, job listings, electronic resume banks, and then information about education and training providers. Um, some of our intensive services, um, they're a little similar to those core services, but just more specialized. And those include comprehensive skills assessment, individualized counseling and career planning, case management, career workshops, and then intensive follow-up services once successful career placement has been achieved. Training services, there are participants who will be eligible to receive training services if they are available, if they're not eligible for intensive services. And then they've demonstrated or we have assessed um, that there is a need for them to receive these training services in order to re retain a job and, update and upgrade their skills. Some of those training services offered within our offices could include basic skills training, which include GED preparation, occupational skills training, on the job training, or customized training. All right, so our first program I'm gonna touch base on that we have is our Jobs for Veterans State Grant. So the Nebraska Department of Labor is dedicated to providing reemployment services to all veterans. Veterans and eligible spouses receive access and priority of service to the full range of public employment and training services, which include our career assessment and counseling, assistance with resumes, cover letters, and interviewing skills, supportive services, referrals, job placement assistance, and referrals to employers, information on careers, training, education, and financial aid resources, job search workshops, labor market information, and then all of our resource rooms also have access to computer and internet so that if we have individuals that are coming into our office, we can assist them one-on-one -on -one with navigating our AnyWorks um, website, navigating other job banks, and then actually physically helping them with filling out job applications. And a lot of services that we provide on the veteran side is making sure that we obtain the required documentation so that we can assist them with getting veterans preference for those um, specific employers industries that are hiring based off of that model. So our veteran um, reemployment coordinators within all our follow all of our offices, they're actually military veterans themselves. And they also assist in 
employers and employer associations to promote veteran hiring initiatives. They educate employers on the benefits of hiring veterans and help them attract, hire, and retain a veteran workforce. So not only does our JVSG staff work with those veteran job seekers, but they also work with employers to assist these veterans in identifying employers that are actively seeking that target population to fill and retain their workforce. So it assists them with really getting into those veteran friendly employers throughout the state. And then our largest program is our Wagner Pfizer services. Um, so Wagner Pfizer job seeker services include job search assistance, such as navigating the AnyWorks labor exchange system, referrals to open positions and placement assistance, including resume assistance res or interview preparation, workshops and referrals to additional supportive service and training programs. In addition to this program, as you can see with the priority of service that I have listed, this program does provide specialized attention and services to individuals that are veterans, um, those that have disabilities, migrant and seasonal farm workers, justice involved individuals, youth, minorities and older workers. Then our Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. So this is more of the career planning and intensive services that I had mentioned before during the three tier of services that we offer through the Department of Labor. Some of the WIOA services that we provide both on the adult, dislocated worker and youth program are career planning and counseling, job search assistance, short term or long and long term training programs that are going to lead individuals in receiving an industry recognized credential that's going to assist them in obtaining a job in a high demand, high skilled, uh, workforce where they're going to be able to make that either self or family sustaining wages with the um, potential to be promoted within and with an industry that's going to have a strong proje projected growth within the labor market. Um, some of the short-term programs um, could last up to six months and just leading them into a credential that's going to make them more marketable or a specific credential that we are seeing employers um, looking for so that we can promote that. A long-term training program would be anything over six months so a lot of times leading up to those associates degrees um, in a specific high demand industry then we have our workforce work-based training uh, work-based learning program and then our supportive services as well too so WIOA is actually one of our only programs um, that we actually can provide funding to the participant or the employer so we can assist them with uh, paying for that tuition to get those industry recognized credentials, assisting them with supportive service such as uniforms, tools, books that they're going to need to be successful in that training or to be successful in the new career after placement, before or after placement. And then WIOA's main purpose is to streamline and strengthen the strategic roles of our workforce development boards. Um, we improve services to employers and promote those work-based trainings and provide access to high quality training. So WIOA really helps those job seekers acquire those industry recognized uh, credentials for these in-demand jobs that we have in Nebraska. All right, so here we have our WIOA eligibility. Um, so for our adult program, individuals just must be 18 years or older and have a show or need for a career or training services. Now we do provide those priority of services for those individuals who have those barriers to employment. So anybody that um, is basic skills deficient, anybody who is long-term uh, unemployed, underemployed, individuals that have those disabilities or individuals who have been receiving public assistance. Those are our really targeted populations that we're trying to serve and reserving our funding first because they're the mo ones that are in the most need of developing these skills so that we can help them get into a long-term career and help them retaining these positions. For our dislocated worker program, um, the qualification is anybody who lost a job due to no fault of their own, um, maybe a transitioning service member, someone who has um, successfully fulfilled their um, active duty requirements through the armed forces and then are transitioning out into the civilian world. Qualified military spouses, so an individual whose husband or wife had gotten out of the armed forces and they are relocating back um, to another state, they could be considered a dislocated worker at that point. Um, a self-employed individual who is an experiencing um, a loss of income. So that's something we've seen a lot during COVID-19. Obviously, a lot of 
entrepreneurs and self-employed individuals had experienced a, an extreme loss of income, so they would qualify as that dislocated worker program through WIOA, and then our displaced homemakers as well too. For our youth, um, anybody who is 14 to 21 years old and is currently enrolled in school are going to meet the definition and eligibility for our WIOA uh, in-school youth program. They do have to show that they are owing low income and they have to experience at least one barrier to employment. And that may be homelessness, um, uh, basic skills deficient, receiving that public assistance, um, justice involved youth. Uh, there's a couple of different sorts of barriers um, that we have out there for that eligibility, but they have to meet the initial of low income and then at least have one of those barriers to employment for eligibility. Um, for our in-school youth, they have to be six, or for our out-of-school youth, they have to be 16 to 24 years of age and not currently enrolled in school. They also are gonna have to meet that low income criteria and experience one of those barriers that I've mentioned before. All right, so then we have our SNAP, SNAP Next Step and uh, ENT. So the SNAP Next Step and ENT program assist SNAP participants in achieving their employment goals um, and reaching self-sufficiency. The SNAP Next Step and ENT program provides assistance navigating employment change in, changes and prepares the participant for how they may affect their economic um, assistance benefits. So the program does include a partnership between our Department of Health and Human Services and the Nebraska Department of Labor. Um, SNAP Next Step and ENT help SNAP participants that are unemployed or underemployed work towards being self-sufficient by assisting in search for more suitable employment, providing support to better provide for their families, and decreasing or eliminating the individual's need for public assistance. Some of the assistance that the SNAP Next Step ENT services includes assistance um, with job search, preparing for those interviews, updating resumes, um, financial assistance for those occupational skills training, work experience and on the job training opportunities, tuition assistance within the short term training program. And then they provide that case management services, much like our WIOA or, uh, case managers provide as well too. So they'll be there and assisting with checking in on the progress of a client's employment plan, following up after they start a new job to ensure that that employment situation is going to be a good fit for them and their family. And then they assist with reviewing those SNAP benefits and discuss different budgets to ensure that they're understanding how some of those changes in employment are going to affect those benefits so that we're not leading them into what we call a benefit cliffs. So anytime we have an individual come into our office or referred to a SNAP Next Step through DHHS, we're also going to refer them to our WIOA program as well too. So if they're receiving that public assistance, they're going to qualify and they're definitely going to be um, a priority of service that we want to serve. So what we'll do is work within our case managers to do a co-enrollment into both of our programs so that a participant's gonna have access to two case managers and two separate funding streams to assist them with their training, career needs, or um, supportive services that they're gonna need, which will uh, help us in helping them eliminate their barriers to employment a lot more efficiently and really help focus on getting them into those full-time careers. Um, but again, just like WIOA, clients are offered those supportive services as needed to be successful by a case-by-case -case uh, basis. So this is an opportunity if they're co-enrolled in WIOA and SNAP Next Step that we can really leverage our funding resources so that we can assist them with gas to get to and from school or work until they get that first paycheck. We can help them out with getting the um, work clothing, uniforms, interview attire that they need to be successful, help them out with those books and tools that they're going to require to complete their training or before they accept um, that next career. And then SNAP Next Step ENT eligibility. So the workforce coordinators or third party partners with potential eligibility clients that are received through referrals as well as outreach. Um, potential clients are contacted to discuss the program and determine if they are interested in participating. So if they're receiving SNAP benefits, they do not have to participate in SNAP Next Step ENT and they do not have to participate in WIOA, but it is um, beneficial for them to at least sit down with those career planners to discuss the benefits of working with them in obtaining um, their training and career needs. If they're interested, a meeting is scheduled with the client regarding their employment goals, barriers, and how Next Step ENT may assist them in achieving their goals. 
After enrolling with uh, Next Step ENT, the client is going to be referred and co-enrolled with our WIOA program through the Department of Labor again, so that we're providing additional support through case management and additional financial resources for these individuals. And as I mentioned, SNAP Next Step ENT is a voluntary program and, our, and participants can start or drop out at any time if they wish. But if they do not successfully complete the program and they do wanna drop out, there's no guarantee that that funding through WIOA or SNAP is gonna be available in the future with them. So that's the time when we do our outreach with SNAP and WIOA, we really wanna do that co marketing, co-outreach, and co-report building with our clients so they understand the benefits and they can adhere to our program requirements so that we can successfully assist them with providing financial resources or providing those career counseling so that they can get those skills and employments that they need and employment assistance they need to get off the programs and to get back into employment full time. All right, and then trade services is going to be our next. So our Trade Adjustment Assistance and Reauthorization Act helps out with training, income support, job search assistance, relocation assistance, and then reemployment and trade adjustment assistance for older workers, including health coverage tax credit. So the trade authorization, the Trade Adjustment Assistance Reauthorization Act provides services for those who have lost their employment due to foreign trade. This may include all or some, or some of a company's operations moving overseas or the sourcing of products or services from other countries. Eligibility for the trade program is very specific and requires approval of a trade position, a petition. If eligible for TAA, you, you and participants may qualify for up to 130 weeks of full or part-time training resulting in a industry recognized credential. During that time, the trade program will cover tuition, fees, and books. And then additional training options may include employer-based training, such as on-the-job training, customized training, and then registered apprenticeships as well. Income support is available for workers who are enrolled in a full-time trade approved training, and then trade does reimburse a portion of allowable expenses incurred during a participant's job search, which could include mileage reimbursement or lodging. Um, should an individual that's um, enrolled in our trade program find a job outside of their commuting area, then we can also assist with that relocation expenses. Workers that are 55 or older may even qualify for wage subsidy if reemployed at a reduced salary from their trade affected position. And then if trade affected, they may also qualify for income tax credits related to the cost of maintaining the, their health coverage. And as I mentioned, uh, for trade eligibility, it is limited to those affected by a layoff that has been certified as trade eligible. So affected workers apply for benefits and services through their act actual local job centers. And what they would need to do is bring their trade notification letter when actually applying. And then eligibility is going to be determined after they've met with our trade staff and their application has been processed. All right, so reemployment services and eligibility assessment. Um, so RACIA, uh, one of our program, one of our many programs with the Division of Reemployment, strives to empower unemployment insurance claimants with the necessary tools to rapidly gain sustainable employment while upholding the integrity of the unemployment compensation program. So the primary goals of our RACIA program are to improve employment outcomes for individuals that receive unemployment compensation, thereby reducing the duration of their of how much they're receiving um, their ui benefits due to a gained employment um, we also strengthen the ui program integrity to reduce improper payments as well and then promote the alignment with a broader vision of the workforce innovation and opportunity act increasing program integration and service delivery for job seekers so anybody who is filing unemployment and they do not have a return to work date um, within 112 days with their former employer, they're gonna be required to attend an any res orientation through the RACIA program. So this may be the first time an individual um, is actually meeting with, with a workforce professional. And what our staff is gonna do is really sit down, develop and complete an objective assessment summary that's gonna assist them in identifying their past work experience, what barriers to employment they currently are facing, and what services we can get them connected to so that we can assist them 
in concentrating on getting back to reemployment or reemployed as soon as possible. We also sit down with them and develop individual employment uh, plans and goals, and then objectives as milestones to assist them in accomplishing those goals. As our staff are identifying these barriers, then they're making those connections with our WIOA career planners, our Jobs for Veterans State grants, our SNAP programs, or additional partner resources that we have in the community to assist them in overcoming those barriers and to uh, decrease the time that they are on employment. Next, uh, and this isn't a program, this actually, our Migrant Seasonal Farm Worker Outreach uh, or Services actually falls under our Wagner Pizer program, but it's specialized outreach that we do within Greater Nebraska. So for Migrant Seasonal Farm Workers, um, we serve those job seekers and employers, again, like I mentioned, through the Wagner Pizer Act. And some of the services include those basic services that you see in Wagner Pizer, but can get into the tents of services through WIOA, which is any works registration assistance, training opportunities, um, for, for them, job search assistance, job referrals, and then referrals to supportive services, complaint resolution, and then agricultural recruitment systems. So again, special attention is given to provide migrant and seasonal farm workers with employment services and assist them with the navigating the employment complaint process. Employment services, as I mentioned there, include that labor market information, workshops, skills testing, application assistance, resumes and interviewing, and referrals to training resources. And what we do is our staff actually bring our services to them. So we do have a mobile uh, unit and, and have the technology to actually go out and identify these migrant seasonal farm workers where they're actually working or where they're gathering. Because a lot of them, their hours um, are not conducive to being able to physically access our office. So we wanna bring our programs to them and we wanna see what we can do to upgrade their skills to either get them a more permanent full-time all year round position within that current agricultural industry or see what we can do to get them out of that temporary farm work and get them into a full-time permanent position. The target population um, for this uh, group is gonna be an individual who is employed or was employed in the past 12 months in farm work or seasonal, with, that was in seasonal or temporary nature and who is eligible to work in the United States. Um, and I wanted to go into um, the difference between uh, migrant and seasonal farm worker real quick too. So a seasonal farm worker is actually a person who during the last past 12 months worked or is in or is working in farm work of seasonal or temporary nature and is not required to be absent overnight from his or her permanent residence. Uh, a non or a migrant farm worker is a seasonal farm worker who had to travel to the farm work and was unable to return to his, his or her permanent residence within the same day. So again, we really wanna get our staff out there and identify these individuals who are happening to travel for work or happening to bring their family across the state and really see what we can do to upgrade their skills so that we can get them a more secured year round uh, position. And we work closely with Migrant Education and then with Proteus as well too, who's another uh, partner with um, employment and training grants that can assist us with doing code case management and sending individuals for occupational skills training to gain those credentials so that we can assist them in being successful in getting into an industry that is more permanent and year round. Another service um, outside of the job seeker that we provide through the Department of Labor Division of Reemployment Services is our business services. And the purpose of business services or our preferred uh, employer program is to connect employers to workforce programs and services that provide comprehensive workforce solutions and to facilitate meaningful collaborations that lead to long-term solutions. So our approach in business services is solution-based and we address the needs of employers by strategically aligning resources to include various services and programs by creatively thinking to develop solutions that are innovative and customized to meet their needs of the employer. This may include recruiting, retention, training new or existing employees, or layoff aversion strategies. Uh, additional, additionally, the business services program integrates various NDOL internal teams and services and, pro and programs, as well as partnering workforce agencies as seen fit according to the employer's needs. So our business services team, they're the ones that go out and, and talk with our employers, identify what needs that they have, identifying those, those sought after skills that they're looking for. And they bring that information back to our job seeking staff so that we are marketing and we are developing career training pathways 
for our participants that are going to lead them into gaining these skills because we know that they're sought after and we know they're in high demand you know as as we work with our individuals we don't want to just get them into a job um, just for the means of having a job we want to get them into a career we want to make sure that the services that we're providing the the individual employment plans we are creating and the objectives um, that we are establishing are going to lead them into those family sustaining wages. We wanna make sure that it is a career that's gonna have that longevity. And we wanna make sure that um, we have an understanding of those positions, those vacancies within our Nebraska's employers and that we're providing a highly skilled workforce for those employers so that they are more competitive on a global market. All right, and uh, I just have one more section to go over and it's just gonna be touch and base on uh, our Any Works program. But is there any questions for me right now on some of the different reemployment programs that we offer through the Department of Labor? Yeah, I was actually just going to jump in and say, hey, let's see if we have questions at this point. <laughs> um, yeah, so if anybody, if you have any questions, go ahead and type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface, and I'll read them off. Um, Josh, uh, we didn't have any that came in while you were talking, but that's okay. There's a lot of information people are absorbing, I'm sure. Yep. Uh, I know, um, ah, I say someone did just type in a question that I was thinking of too. Um, so what do partnerships with libraries look like? So what do you envision as what um, libraries can do? For? Absolutely. What so we kind of look at the, yeah, at, at libraries as another point of access um, for participants that are going to need um, our services for the employment and training side of things. So we know and we've talked with a lot of different library divisions out there that you have patrons that are coming in and expecting uh, library staff to assist them with identifying training opportunities, assisting them with unemployment resources, assisting them with job searching, um, job matching, and upgrading their skills. So what we want to do is provide the information to staff on what we do as a division so that as these individuals are coming into the office, then staff are able to make that connection with our department and then generate those referrals to our field staff so that our field staff can then take over and provide that meaningful assistance to those individuals so that that's not being a burden on the actual library staff itself. So, you know, um, we're really looking at our virtual service delivery model and utilizing libraries. We know a lot of libraries do have the technology available so that we can provide access to services through a virtual delivery model. And that that's what we're looking at on the partnership side is just educating the library staff so as so that they are able to identify some of the needs of their patrons and then get those referrals to our field staff so that we are increasing our accessibility and we're, we're increasing our outreach to those rural areas for people that may not know we exist or just don't have the option or the ability to physically come into our office to learn about the resources and eligibility for the programs that we offer. So basically getting libraries up to speed on all of these um, services that they may not have known about, um, but also you, you uh, librarians are not responsible for helping people with these. <laughs> the idea Correct. is um, you have Josh and possibly other people on his team that would be the ones that you just referred them to. Um, yep. We and this was, um, I know when we talked about this, we had a little kind of pre-meeting with Josh and some um, our regional system directors about this that a um, <clears throat> long time ago in the past, there was a reach from out from pre-Josh's time from Department of Labor about, hey, here's the things we have, and then not really any follow-up after that. And for a little while, things were like, oh, great, and then nobody knew what to do. So this is gonna be more of an ongoing type of thing too with training, and um, so you'd be constantly, well, not constantly, regularly in contact with Josh about what's happening now, what's new, um, how things have changed, new services, whatever. Yes, exactly. Yep. And I'm in the process of developing step-by-step um, -step procedures and manuals that I want to be able to, to send out to all the library staff. So, you know, if it is a basic career service that they need, like, or if it's something with unemployment, then library staff will have access to that material that they can hand off, like, here you go. Here's the step-by-step -step process with it. If you need additional assistance, we can refer you to a reemployment coordinator. They'll make that contact with you and can assist you further. 
in, in providing the services or assisting you with any of the uh, technical assistance that they need for any works, assist with anything on the unemployment side of thing, and then assist them with making sure or getting the steps done to get eligible for some of our different uh, training programs. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is uh, Lori says that a long, um, in a, um, close that, that's where you are. <laughs> a long time ago, the Department of Labor used to have trainings at libraries for patrons, not for staff, she remembers. <clears throat> okay, so they're actually doing more workshops in the library locations. Um, and she wanted to know, do we give phone numbers out, emails, do we reach out to you or leave it up to the people, you know, which, like you said, some people cannot travel to you. I guess that would be part of the, decision is it just a here's the phone number to call Josh or um, so what I, would, I mean I guess it could work both ways the librarian can call you on their behalf depending yeah no it doesn't and actually what I'm actually finishing up right now and again I got to get everything approved by our PIO staff before I can get everything out to the public but one thing that I'm putting the final touches on is our WI or our workforce um, partner guide and that's actually gonna have all of our programs and then all of our partner programs, the brief information on what services they provide, and then it's gonna have the contact and the referral methods for those organizations as well too. And that's gonna be something that I'll send out to all staff, library staff, and I'll periodically update as we have any change or any changes in staff or changes within our programs as well too. So it's gonna be a detailed information about the different programs we operate through the Department of Labor, and then which office covers each region. So that if we do have people coming in, then they'll have that um, ability to submit an email referral to provide those services. And then they can CC me in that email so that I'm just making sure that our staff are reaching out to those individuals and services are rendered. Yeah, that's cool. That's nice, yeah. Um, I had a question. So would, would any, some of this um, reaching contact with you know, getting your staff in connected to the library users, people who need your service, be done um, virtually as well? Like at, at, um, some libraries are working on setting up for telemedicine or for other reasons, um, small meeting rooms or um, modular rooms that can, you know, people can do a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, WebEx session or a Zoom session mm -hmm. with someone. Um, is that something that you all would have the ability to do with people too? Like, like you said, they can't travel to you, but they might want to quote unquote face-to-face -face virtually. Sure. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, we, we want to make it um, a, a, as less barriers as possible for mm -hmm. the participants. And with libraries uh, having more locations than we do in a lot of the areas and regions that we cover, that is something um, that we would like to do. And we have the ability to do that. And, it, and it's going to be kind of go on a case by case basis to um, with each individual library, if they're going to have, you know, they have that ability to provide um, that, that computer technology, um, the WebEx or the, the webcams um, so that we can connect our reemployment staff to those individuals. And we have developed some step-by-step -step process um, for technical assistance through our WebEx meetings as well too. So that if we could get the assistance from library staff just to be there to assist them with getting the meeting going on there. And then from there, we can actually take over. We can provide that initial rapport building with them. We can pull up all the required documentations that we're gonna meet, need sign from the participant on that WebEx meeting and they'll be able to annotate that information where we can save it directly to our system. So it's not going to require them to print out any information. It's not going to require library staff to scan any personal identifiable information or um, documents for us. We'll be able to actually get all of that accomplished through that virtual meeting with the client. Slick, I like that. <laughs> it's fantastic, absolutely. Yeah. Um... And, and especially for our patrons who don't have transportation to get to any office, yeah, transportation issues. Uh, yep. Then another question, because it um, was mentioned that you previously, a long time ago, used to have trainings at libraries for patrons. Um, and you know, you're talking about this more one-on-one -on -one thing, but is that a possibility, she wants to know, for the Department of Labor to do at libraries again, trainings like resume workshops or something like that? Is that something... Um, potentially in your plan, like actually going to a library and saying, we're going to be doing this particular workshop, you know, 10 attendees, whatever. 
Yep. And yeah, I leave that on um, individual field offices um, on how they want to coordinate those workshops, those presentations as well, too. I know COVID has kind of put us back with doing a lot of those uh, in-person outreach, those workshops and orientations. But it is something um, that I know a couple of the individual offices are looking at starting back up. And we've actually talked about doing virtual presentations as well, too, for those uh, for those individuals so that you know we, we promote maybe once a quarter or once a month we're going to do a workshop um, that's going to go over resume building or go over any works registration go over labor market information then that's something if an office doesn't have the ability or feel comfortable with doing that in person um, mm -hmm. that we could also provide virtually as well too for those patrons yes sure. and if the people like want to gather either in a <clears throat> In a, in a meeting room at the library, they could all could potentially watch it as a small group, or you just promote it to everybody in the community can log in um, individually if they wanted. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Yep. So yeah, right. we're really, really trying to practice this virtual because we know it's kind of the new world of it, and um, it you is. know, yeah, and and we don't we 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 our staff cover a large area as yeah. well too. So it, that's how I say it's it's kind of based off an office by office basis on their availability um, to promote and to do those workshops. But I know just not too long ago, um, our Region Five office had his one of their workforce co or reemployment coordinators uh, at I think it was the North Fork Library or South Sioux Library. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. um, and, and sitting there to promote uh, to do workshops as well too for a few hours. So I know it's still happening. Um, it just may not be as active as it was prior to COVID. But that's what we're trying to go through at virtual services and see how we can still provide our services and educate everyone so they can access us and get the information without physically happening to come into our office. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I know we've all over the last couple of years been quote unquote forced into a lot of this virtual. Um, we've been doing Encompass Live virtually like this for over 10 years, so it was not new to us. But <laughs> um, as far as doing meetings and other events and things, um, but it's kind of had the side effect, you know, we were forced into it, but many more people have now been able to participate that never could before. Homebound people, disabled people, people who do not have the ability to travel even to potentially their local library for a training in person because they take care of their kids or they have a job and they just can't. Um, but there's a virtual thing they could just from home quickly log into or be able to participate. And I think it's something that is going to uh, is going to stick around and I hope it sticks around that there's always the both options. You can do it in person, but we're going to have virtual for all of those of you that we now know. This stuff just wasn't ever available um, just because of the inability to get to an in-person in person. You know, we've well okay. learned and gotten comfortable with this over the last couple of years. And I'm hoping it's yeah. I think it's going to have to stick around. <laughs> yep, I agree. Absolutely. All right, any other questions right now? Looks like they've slowed down a bit at the moment. Like I said, we are going to go longer than our lot official time because of some of the technical issues we had earlier, but we will get through all of Josh's presentation. And any questions any of you have, have please do what you want to stick around with us as long as we go. Um, but if you do have to leave, that's okay. We will keep recording. You can watch the rest of it later. So right. I think we can continue. I think we just did a few more things to talk about. Yep, absolutely. Yep. So I just want to go a brief um, overview of Nebraska Works, um, you know, our internal job exchange. Um, I know a lot of you have probably seen it or probably have been asked for to assist patrons in either getting registered um, or navigating the actual website itself. And this is another uh, material that I've actually created step by step processes. Um, for the AnyWorks registration and accessing different tools on AnyWorks, including the unemployment services, so that library staff can utilize that to provide to patrons so that they can do it self-guided themselves on there. So it's something that, you know, it's not gonna take your time away with getting someone registered for AnyWorks or accessing um, the different services that we offer there. But just a brief overview, if you haven't seen any works of just kind of what it is, so that as I'm sending some of this material after this call, then you'll, you'll understand the pertinent, uh, the, the importance of that material and how it's gonna assist you with at least just providing information to those patients that are coming in there. So it's reducing the time that you're having to spend on, on providing these services. So AnyWorks is uh, the state of Nebraska's largest, most comprehensive online job database. So Nebraska business of every size and industry utilize AnyWorks 
um, to connect with thousands of highly qualified job seekers, including a large bank of professionals, high skilled workers, and veterans. So job seekers, whether unemployed or seeking a new career, are going to benefit from taking time to register with any works for their career exploration. There are several functionalities within this job database that include career pathway planning, employer connections, skills assessments, resume assistance, hiring events and job fairs, and unemployment insurance benefits. So some of the features that we have for job seekers are going to be the eligibility explorer, the career pathway planning, employer connections, skills assessments, resume builder, and unemployment insurance benefits. And what the eligibility explorer is, is a one-stop system that is designed to provide assistance through coordination of partner agencies offering services to help with employment and training opportunities. These services are provided at no cost and are de and designed to help job seekers in gaining employment. Programs may be able to offer training and can provide job search assistance and available that are available through our local American Job Center. By completing this pre-application, appropriate referrals to programs um, job seekers may qualify for can be provided as well as information on how to access these services. So part of that step-by-step -step guide that I have for staff is how individuals can fill out the Eligibility Explorer um, after they've actually successfully registered. By asking a few um, questions on this program, it'll identify some of the programs that I mentioned earlier that they may qualify for, and then that'll send, they'll, they'll be able to do a self-referral to our actually staff, to our staff members so that they can get in contact and determine further eligibility and start the enrollment process and case management process to assist them in their employment and training needs. So career pathway planning, another, um, service that they can utilize through any works. Um, they ha they'll have the ability to do career services, which is um, tips, career explorer, career match, information on job uh, market explorer. They'll have job seeking services where they can actually view open positions. They can look at labor market information, including job trends. They're actually allowed to build a resume and then set up virtual recruiters. And that virtual recruiter will actually bring in specific job search criteria to the individual. So every time they log in as new positions are getting posted on our website, they'll actually get email updates of these new positions if they've, they've selected the criteria of something that they are interested in. They're also going to have access to our education services. So they'll actually be able to look at our training or eligible training providers that we utilize for our Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act so that they know that if they go into that course of study through that institution and they qualify for WIOA, then we'll be able to assist them financially and assist them with creating that, that budget for them so that we can successfully obligate funds to help them um, secure the, those training credentials. And again, they have access to labor market information. So if they're looking at getting into a new career field, they'll be able to go through and look at um, labor market facts, you know, what industries are growing, which are paying what, and then what skills um, they're going to need in order to be more marketable for those positions. Along with community services and benefits, they're going to be able to access all of our WIOA core programs and require partners through WIOA to see what additional resources all are available to assist them with overcoming their barriers to employment, along with financial services and literacy. All right, so employer connections. Um, so as you can see there, as uh, an individual goes through looking for a job, they'll pull up jobs that kind of look like this and give them a rough estimate of what the pay is for that specific position. So as I mentioned, um, during the introduction in, in any works, employers of all sizes utilize this site to seek out their talent. Job seekers who have an active registration in any works will have access to thousands of positions in the state, and they're actually able to filter their search criteria to specific occupation and area that they're going to be searching. They'll also have the option, as I mentioned, to set up that virtual rec recruiter tool. So that, that tool, as I mentioned, creates an automated job search on the behalf of the job seeker. And once they have successfully filled out uh, the jobs, alert criteria, the system will generate alerts with new jobs as they are posted. All right, another access they have is skills assessments. Um, as you can see, there, there's a variety of different skills, uh, skill assessments that they can complete. And the AnyWorks career assessments, they are a great tool to assist job seekers in determining a career or occupation 
that best suits their skills and experience. There are several assessments um, that, that one may use, and some are actually going to be required in enrolling in certain reemployment programs. So there's a couple of these skills assessments before they can get enrolled into our programs that they're going to be required to take, but it's an, it's an additional opportunity for them to utilize so that they can just identify um, some of their career aspirations and, and what they're going to need to work on to, to meet those career goals. And resume builder, as I mentioned. So anybody um, that registers for AnyWorks has access to this tool as well, too. So the resume template will allow clients to fill in their objective, skills, education, and work history that they would like to showcase to a potential employer. They are able to have no more than five different resumes attached to their actual AnyWorks profile. And if they choose not to utilize some of the information that you see there on the template, they're not required to do so. But once that template is completed, they're going to receive a score, an overall score of how well their template was created to help them out with adjusting some things to making sure that their resume is really going to showcase their skills and experience and get that employer's attention. Um, once they receive that score and they're finished completed, the resume will automatically put the information provided into a nice clean template that they're going to be able to access from anywhere at any time. Um, and it is worth noting that there are many employers uh, that post on our website that require applicants to apply to their positions utilizing the resume that they have on any work. So it's just a different application method that they do utilize. And a well-developed resume is also going to be required for anybody that's filing unemployment insurance benefits. Again, something that they can utilize through our website and complete. All right, and then the last thing is just unemployment insurance benefits. So there's three initial and continued steps for receiving unemployment. And, and anybody that's going to be filing for unemployment has to utilize and do so with our AnyWorks um, job search engine. So as, as I mentioned, three initial and continued steps for receiving unemployment insurance benefits that some of you have probably seen or have been asked for assistance for in the past is unemployment. And it is worth noting that you know, even our reemployment field staff um, do not conduct the process for the unemployment claims for the client. So it's definitely something we don't want library staff to be doing either. And that's why I'm going to provide you guys with the information on the step by step processes for clients so that they can do that on their own. We don't we don't want library staff, our partner, other partners or even our staff that are not unemployment to be, to be filing unemployment claims on behalf of the participants because it can lead into a lot of issues um, if they get declined or if there's any sort of fraud that's determined throughout their claim process. So I just wanted to note that, that we do not expect any one of our partners to be filing those claims, but just giving you an idea of what the clients are seeing and what some of my step-by-step -step process is going to assist you in being able to provide them with that information. And then from there, they should be able to successfully complete their unemployment insurance. So the first step is for claimants to file an initial unemployment claim on AnyWorks. This is gonna be a self-guided process where claimants will be required to answer questions pertaining to their previous work experience and the events that took place that led them to an unemployed status. After a claimant has filed a new claim, they're gonna be required to conduct a job search and file a weekly claim for every week they are, on, they are unemployed or their hours have been reduced. And it does take them about uh, 21 days to actually process a new unemployment claim. But again, not something that we have an expectation and we really don't want our library partners or any of partners helping out with that unemployment. But just wanted to let you know that, yeah, when, when individuals come in to register for any works, there's a good chance they're doing so to file that uninsurance um, uh, claim and, and I just want to make sure that you were aware that they're doing that and then I can provide you guys with the information to provide to your patrons so that they can go through that by themselves and get that filed. And then if they do have any uh, problems and then, then part of our resource guide is going to be that contact information to Lincoln Unemployment Adjudicators that they can a call to get further assistance. All right, and that was it um, for the AnyWorks. I just kind of want to touch base on the website itself in case you hear of anyone um, that's going to utilize it. Anybody that's enrolled in any of our programs have to be registered for AnyWorks. That would be the first um, step as individuals are coming in looking for job seeking um, or training or employment or training services is to make sure that we're getting them registered for AnyWorks. And, and for you as partners, that could just be simply providing the step-by-step -step process that I provide so that they can get an accurate registration in there and then do that self-referral through our Eligibility Explorer. So then our reemployment staff can make that initial outreach and contact to determine further program eligibility and 
then see what we need to do to provide them assistance. So do I have any questions on any works? Uh, let's see. Um, I noticed the AFNET pop came in while you were talking. Does anybody have any questions about the any works program or the um, website? Uh, if you type into the question section, it looks like um, everybody's still here. That's awesome. Thank you so much, everybody, for sticking with us. Um, and I'd just like to say, yeah, AnyWorks is a great resource and definitely the place to start. I've always you know, kept an eye on that for people. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Yeah, and, and like I said, Krista, if you would like for me, I can send you all of these resources that I have created. I'm going to kind of organize them out into different folders so that they're pertinent for each of our programs that we have there. Some of it's just going to be desk guides or aids for the librarians and staff there that they can just provide to job seekers on there. And then some of it's just going to be the best practices as well of connecting that staff um, with, our, with our field staff so that we can identify those uh, career and training needs so that we can make those contacts for individuals. So as a partnership with the library, we're just needing assistance in marketing our services so that we're reaching that, that underserved population. Those that don't know we exist or don't have a full understanding on how to connect with us or those that have those physical barriers where they cannot access our offices. We're just we're really needing an, an assistance in identifying those underserved populations so that we can really uh, identify the skills that they need and get them enrolled in our programs, get their skills upgraded so that we're filling these vacant positions with our Nebraska employers, with our local Nebraska residents. Yeah, and I think that's great. I mean, that's um, a good point to make that because I know, I'm sure oftentimes when this kind of thing comes up to librarians where it says, uh, let's have a partnership for a new thing that, you know, the fear is more that we have to figure out and learn and do, um, and they're happy to do many new things. But I think this is a great thing that the people are out there at the Department of Labor and in this, the workforce development areas that you um, would just need to get, make that connection, absolutely. And yep. that, so you know who to send people to that you're, as, as the staff at the libraries, you are not uh, floundering around and wondering and saying, well, here's a website. I don't know anything else. Figure it out. You know, you got a little bit of info, um, but it's all a, definitely a referral thing. And there are people out there that are um, available and waiting and want you to, <laughs> you know, contact them <laughs> to get in, you know, connected with these people that need the help. Absolutely. And we just want to lessen that burden. And we know, you know, the library, um, they're actively involved in the community. So they may know a lot more than we do of the needs of their local community. And if they have those different, that information or the needs that need to be addressed, and they can reach out to us directly as well, too, so that we can plan those different outreach um, or workshops um, for those local communities yeah. so that we can assist in promoting employers or assist in upgrading skills. Yeah, you're not limited to whatever, you know, when we do get these, the documentation and the, and the um guys that you're putting together, that you're not limited to that. If there's something else you come up with from your side, from the librarian library side, and say, here's something I know is needed, reach out to Josh and we can maybe put something together. Um, this yep. is something that we, it's essentially, you mentioned that knowing what's in the community, this is something that could definitely benefit for libraries. Um, we do um, have help libraries do what we call community needs response plans. Um, which is um, are used then as part of their um, accreditation process uh, for libraries that want to become accredited. Um, and it is look outside the library, what's happening in your community, what do they need, and what can you do to respond to it. So this whole program here is a perfect thing to put into your community's response plan, just as a tip if you're looking for something to go to say, here's a goal we have, or here's a program we want to do. Um, this is like maybe perfectly set up for that. Yep, absolutely. Well, it doesn't look like anybody has any other questions at the moment they typed in um, about any work or anything. Does anybody have any of the desperate last minute things you want to ask Josh right now while we have him here? Type into the question section. If not, we will have his contact info and we will be reaching out with all the, that documentation when it is ready. Um, so uh, you'll be hearing from Josh again. <laughs> yeah. 
technology. Absolutely. Right? Also, or through the, the regional library systems. As I said, he did meet with the re our regional library system directors and the four systems too. So they're going to be involved in somehow also, you know, keeping the back and forth going um, with the yep. libraries too. I can't see if you're actually typing. It's not like where it lets me know. So I have to kind of wait until your message comes up. And, if anybody has anything. But it doesn't look like anything's come in. So I think that's good. I think we can wrap it up. Um, thank you so much, Josh. I'm glad you got back in. We're able to do your presentation because this is very important um, and good and useful information for all the libraries. <laughs> As I know I appreciate the opportunity, Chris. And like I said, once we get these um, this information developed, I'll start sending them out uh, nationwide, and then I'll give everyone uh, my direct email as well too. So that there's any issues or just one additional uh, understanding of programs, technical assistance, or training or anything, they can always reach out to me directly and work through those so that we can make sure that our our agency is providing our end of the bargain and really making those connections and mm -hmm. serving those populations as library staff are identifying them. Perfect, and keep that back and forth going, absolutely. All right, great, thank you then. Thank you so much, Rosh. Thank you, thank you everyone for being here with us this morning. Stick around um, for the show. As I said, it um, has been is being recorded and will be on our website here. I'm showing, I've got our webpage up here. These are upcoming shows, but here's a link to our archives. It's right here at the bottom. Um, most recent ones go at the top, so today's will be here. By the end of the day, tomorrow it should be up. There'll be a link to our a recording on our YouTube, and then um, Josh, will you send me your slides? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Well, the slides up as well, so you'll have that um, available too, if um, to to look over as well. Um, when this is ready, I will email everyone who attended today and everyone who registered for today's show to let you know when it's ready. Like I said, sometime tomorrow should be done. Um, while we're here, I'll show you this is our full show archives. You can search. We have a little search feature here if you want to look for, um, see if you've done a show on a particular topic. We do have a um, um, limit here. You can search the whole full show archives or just most recent 12 months if you want something just very current. Um, and I will, I did mention earlier, we've been doing Encompass Live for over 10 years now. This is our full show archive. I'm not going to scroll to the bottom because that would be crazy and dizzying, but um, just do pay attention when you do watch an archive to the original broadcast date. They all have the date there, so you know when it originally happened. Um, some information in the shows will stand the test of time. They'll be good and useful, but some things will become outdated and old. Uh, services may have changed drastically. Links might not work anymore. Websites might have disappeared. Who knows? Um, but uh, this is what we do as librarians. One of the things we do is keep things for historical purposes. And as long as we have a place to host them, we will have our full show, show archives out there. Um, so just pay attention when you are watching any of the recordings. Um, we also have, uh, you can see here on our main page, we've got a link here, a Facebook page for Encompass Live. If you do like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. Uh, we do post reminders. Here's a reminder to log in today's show, announcements. Um, when the recordings are ready, when new shows are coming up. Um, so you'll find um, all of that here on our Facebook page. We also post on to Instagram and Twitter, and we have a little hashtag and Comp Live, a little abbreviation of our name. If you want to just search for that hashtag and, and other social media. That wraps up today's show. Um, I hope you join us. Um, if you have got some more November dates getting filled in, I even have some things confirmed for December, so keep it on our schedule. But next week, it is the last Wednesday of the month, so that means it's Pretty Sweet Tech Day. Um, the last Wednesday of every month, uh, Amanda Sweet comes on and does uh, our technology innovation librarian here comes on and does a show. So if you're the tech person or into tech, this is definitely the one to sign up for. And next week, she's going to talk about a new service we have off, are offering here now through the Library Commission, Tech Kits Through the Mail. Um, if you want to try some things out or your patrons want to try things out, we can, um, we'll, we're circulating these things to libraries all across the state. She's been working on this since before the pandemic started, um, but was you know, restricted on what could be lent out and how to do lending due to safety. Um, but now it's um, full go, going full strong, full, um, I think everything is being lent. We'll see. We'll hear from her next week. But so uh, definitely sign up for that next week and any of our other shows coming up. Keep an eye on our schedule we'll here for more of them as they get them filled in. Other than that, thank you everybody for being here this morning. Thanks, Josh, and hope we will see you on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye bye.